Single board computers are everywhere. Whether it's inside a smart coffee machine, a home automation hub, or monitoring equipment out in the field, SBCs have become the quiet backbone of modern embedded edge computing. But with so many options available, picking the right one isn't about raw power or how many USB ports it has, it's about the whole system. Not only how easy it is to develop on or how well it handles connectivity, but what kind of software support is available and how it scales beyond that first prototype. In short, in 2025, which SBC gives you the perfect blend of power, flexibility and manageability to actually launch and support a product? Some boards give you a clean slate and let you build your stack from scratch. Others, like the Raspberry Pi, have big communities and support that will take you some of the way, and then there are full stack single board computers like Particle's Tachyon, offering an integrated platform that handles far more for you. Today, we're gonna to look at a range of SBCs across different architectures and ecosystems and see where they shine and where they leave work for you to do. Join us as we go Behind the Tech. Let's start with the Particle Tachyon. It's new and it's built for production, not just prototyping. It's powered by the same Dragonwing chips used in smartphones, but Particle has adapted it with upstream Linux support and full integration into their own cloud ecosystem. At its core, it is a dual core setup, a Linux capable Cortex A7 and a real time Cortex M33, along with a 12 tops dedicated AI accelerator. It includes built-in 5G LTE, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth, TPM-based secure boot, and runs Particle OS out of the box. That means OTA updates, fleet management, remote debugging, cloud logging, and secure connectivity are all part of the package. As with all Particle products, you're not just buying a board, you're getting a platform. It also supports Raspberry Pi hats via a standard 40-pin GPIO header, making it easy to prototype with existing hardware ecosystems before scaling up to a production-ready solution. That compatibility can significantly reduce development time if you're already familiar with working with Pi's hardware stack. On the software side, Tachyon is deeply integrated with Particle's device cloud, giving you real-time event streaming, webhook triggers, integrations with services like Google Cloud and Azure, and built-in monitoring for device vitals. That means you can route data directly from your devices to a backend with minimal middleware, and it's also secure. If you're building a smart charger, an industrial monitor, or deploying sensors in the field, this is the kind of integration that removes months of dev work. You don't have to write your own OTA system, figure out SIM provisioning, or manage device security from scratch. And that's the key value here. Particle have been providing this service for 10 years. The hardware isn't about horsepower, it's about momentum. Tachyon lets you focus on your product instead of the plumbing behind it. Now it's impossible to have a list like this without talking about the Raspberry Pi 5, and with good reason. It packs a quad-core Cortex-A76 CPU running at 2.4GHz, up to 8GB of RAM, PCIe support, dual HDMI, USB 3 and Gigabit Ethernet. On paper it's powerful, and in practice it is incredibly versatile. The real advantage of the Pi isn't just the hardware, it's the ecosystem. Dozens of operating system images, thousands of tutorials, an enormous community, and if you want to get started fast or try out a different operating system, this is probably the best place to start. But there are trade-offs. Let's say you're using the Pi to scale a battery-powered LTE product. You'll need to add the connectivity yourself. You'll need to manage the firmware updates and device security on your own, along with the power management complications that setup could bring. Again, the Pi is incredibly powerful, but it's a general purpose platform. It can do anything with the right level of customization. The only caveat being, you do that customization. If you need local AI acceleration, the NVIDIA Jetson Orin series is the clear choice. The Jetson Orin Nano, Orin NX, and AGX Orin all use the latest Ampere architecture, combining Cortex-A78AE CPUs with GPUs that include tensor cores for serious machine learning performance. The Orin Nano offers up to 40 to 67 int 8 tops depending on the model, whereas the Orin NX and AGX Orin scale up to 100 and 275 tops respectively. These are purpose-built for robotics, vision systems, and anything that needs real-time AI inferencing at the edge. But that compute power does come with a cost, in both price and power consumption. The Orin Nano starts at about 7 watts, but the AGX Orin can draw over 60 watts under load. And just like with many other boards, you'll need to roll your own solution for cellular, for OTA updates, and for device management. 
You get incredibly powerful hardware and mature drivers, but little else out of the box. This doesn't make the Orange series bad for remote products at scale per se, it's more a case of what kind of product you're wanting to build. If you're targeting automation or small scale orders at high cost and complexity, you're all set. But in the framework of the larger consumer and industrial IoT setting, it is almost certainly overkill. If your product needs high throughput GPU compute, like computer vision or robotics with real time inference, this is the way to go. But if your needs are more modest, the Pi 5 with extra AI hardware or the Tachyon with its built-in accelerator are more than capable for classification, detection, and other typical edge tasks, while giving you a big hobby community or a fully scalable IoT platform respectively. Next, I'm going to cover several boards sharing several different names and manufacturers under one banner. We'll call them Banana Pies. And Banana Pies like the Banana Pie or Orange Pie or other variation of fruit, colour and dessert are part of a family of Linux and Android capable boards that try to do a little bit of everything. You might get a board with SATA or dual gigabit Ethernet or Android preloaded. Some come with incredible specs for the price, other with extra ports and connectivity. Many have AI accelerators. In theory, these boards are incredible. In practice, often incredibly tricky. Documentation is patchy, support can be lacking and short-lived, community support is hit or miss. If you like reinventing wheels or just love debugging drivers, they might appeal. But for shipping and supporting a product long term, you'll be on your own. No shade here, I love esoteric boards to tinker away with, but these are spare time, not prime time single board computers. Switching gears to x86, the Latte Panda Sigma runs full desktop windows on an Intel i5 or i7 with M2 and PCIe expansion and 16GB or more of RAM. If you need x86 compatibility or want to run standard Windows applications on the edge, this is a strong option. It's well suited for local servers, custom HMI interfaces or applications where Windows software is a must. And with its expansion options, it can slot neatly into industrial setups that already rely on PCIe cards or M2 peripherals. For remote updates, you can likely take advantage of existing Windows fleet tools and OTA strategies, though these aren't tailored specifically for embedded IoT, and you'll likely need to thoroughly test and debug any potential brick danger yourself. The Latte Panda Sigma is a fantastic board, but it is quite power hungry and relatively expensive. You also don't get built in LTE or any kind of turnkey cloud stack, and managing a fleet of these at scale will take careful planning. It's a very powerful tool, but it comes with enterprise class responsibilities. Boards like the Cardos Vim 3 and Vim 4 sit in an interesting niche. They are built with Android in mind, with support for Linux and include an onboard MPU for machine learning tasks. You also get M2 slots which let you add LTE if you need it, but again there's no device specific OTA, there's no managed fleet system and little in the way of long term support options unless you build them yourself. But they're great for Android based interfaces, multimedia devices or machine learning demos, but they're not really purpose built for IoT scaling as such. Next up, rock chip boards. I'm lumping them together again because there's the NanoPi, there's the Firefly, there's many all based on rock chips RK series. They're cheap and capable and flexible, and they stock things like the RK3399 or 3588 as their CPU. Many of them have MPUs as well, and they show up as everything from development boards to smart speakers, they're in tablets, they're in Android TV boxes. Because this is hardware that is proven at scale. The various processors are very powerful and energy efficient, they're capable of running Linux or Android with full multimedia and AI support. But the difference is that support. You can absolutely build production hardware with these chips, and many companies do, but there's no integrated platform behind them. Developer tools do exist, but you will be trawling through forums, digging through GitHub repos, or maintaining your own forks of half-supported SDKs. It's a perfect illustration of what's possible. All the moving parts are there to build a commercial product, but you will be responsible for wiring them all together. If you want control and you're prepared to invest time into building your own stack, they are a powerful and budget friendly option. But for teams looking to ship faster and scale cleanly, that back end lift can turn into a bottleneck. Let's talk about connectivity in general, because most single board computers can support LTE with a USB stick or M2 add-on, but managing SIMs, data plans, provisioning and security is its own beast. Now a common option here would be something like the Blues Note Card, which provides LTE connectivity as they offer a very simple way to send and manage data security, and they really are a great option, but it is already adding to your costs and your bill of materials and potentially adding complexity to any OTA updates of your own original design. 
but it is still a great option. And if you're not scared of adding a little complexity to your hardware design and having to plumb together the various cloud services you'll use or write your own, any one of the boards I've talked about here would be fine. But out of the boards covered here, the Tachyon is the only one that integrates 5G LTE directly into the base design, thanks to the Ethersim. And that in turn is baked into Particle Stack for Management, which is 10 years old at this point, and it can do updating, data management, and has been doing it successfully in the field for some time. Connectivity isn't just a feature, it's infrastructure that either you build or start with built into your design tools. And when it's built in, you're already one step closer to shipping something that works. Single board computers are amazing tools. They're essential to modern connected devices and the possibilities are almost literally at this stage endless. But choosing the right one depends on more than just a spec sheet. It's about what you're trying to build, how long you want it to last and how many headaches you're willing to take on. If you are just starting out and learning about this stuff, a Raspberry Pi 5 will definitely serve you the best. Now, if you need x86, Latte Panda seems like a great choice. They make incredible single board computers of varying specs. If you have an unlimited budget and incredibly patient engineers, there's a whole universe of cheap SBCs with amazing specs and very limited support out there. But if you are making an IoT device that needs to scale and comes with a trusted stack built in, this is where Particle as a company, and in this context, the Tachyon shines. See, while very capable as a piece of hardware, Particle's Tachyon isn't trying to be everything. It's built for IoT products that need to scale, stay online, and stay updated. And it's backed by a platform that spent over a decade solving the hard problems for you. But now it's over to you. Have you been through the grinder of getting remote hardware from the desk up to a scalable, updatable product out there in the world? As always, please share your victories, your horror stories, your happy debugging memories, and of course, anything I've missed in this list in the comments section below. Join us next time as we go behind the tech that'll power your next project. If you have liked this video, please do click that button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also check out electromaker.io where we have a full hobby community and shop where you can get parts for your next project, whether it's a hobby project that you're making one of or something that you need 10,000 of, our sales team will be able to help you. As always, I hope you're having a safe, creative week. Take care. Cortex A78 AE CPUs with GPUs that include tensor claws, tensor claws, tensor claws. Arr!